Triton, Neptune's largest moon, is one of the most unusual objects in our solar system. What exactly makes it quite so special? Well, it breaks down into four different areas. A retrograde orbit, massive size for a Neptunian moon, the cold, the fact that Triton is actually getting closer to Neptune. Now, the retrograde orbit is extremely unusual for a moon, and Triton is actually the largest moon with a retrograde orbit in our solar system. And when moons form the same time as the planets they orbit, they orbit in the same direction as the planet spins on its axis. However, Triton's orbit is a retrograde orbit, which means that it orbits in the opposite direction to the planet's axial spin. And the logical way for this to have happened is that Triton was a Kuiper belt object similar to Pluto that was ripped from its orbital position by the tremendous gravitational pull of Neptune, then captured into its current orbital position. This is backed up by the unusual size of Triton, which makes up over 99% of all the mass of the 13 moons orbiting Neptune. Indeed, it's the seventh largest moon in our solar system. It's also slightly larger than Pluto, of a similar composition, with a solid surface of frozen nitrogen, ice, and carbon dioxide, with a thin layer of atmosphere created by the heating of the surface from weak rays from the sun, and rather stronger effects from Neptune's magnetosphere. Under the frozen surface is likely to be a combination of ice, rock, and metal. It becomes denser as you get down towards the core, but we don't really know for sure. What we do know, however, is that Triton is volcanically active, but these volcanoes mainly have nitrogen, which occasionally break through the surface and constantly renew the outer crust of the moon, resulting in a relatively smooth, reflective outer coating of the surface of the moon. It leads us neatly onto Triton's temperature, with the shiny frozen surface of Triton results in something called the albedo effect. Now, what little of the sun's radiation reaches the surface of Triton is then immediately bounced back into space, much the same way as the polar ice caps on Earth work, except the amount reflected may be anywhere from two-thirds to even nine-tenths of the solar radiation being reflected back into space, far more than frozen sea ice on Earth actually reflects. It means that Triton is actually an average of about six degrees centigrade colder than Pluto, now, initially, this might not seem a significant difference, but when you're talking about minus 235 degrees centigrade, we're starting to get fairly close to absolute zero at minus 273 or about that. The difference is fairly startling. Now, due to Triton's unusual orbit, rather than slowly drifting away from the planet, Triton's orbit is actually slowly edging towards Neptune. Eventually, in a couple of billion years, we come too close to Neptune and be ripped apart by the gravitational forces of the planet, likely resulting in a far more spectacular ring than the current one around Saturn, considering how much mass will actually be involved. Now, the problem with Triton, and indeed Neptune as well, is that extremely distant objects in our solar system. Only one spacecraft has flown close to them. This was Voyager 2. 1989. The flyby was relatively quick since Voyager was travelling so fast. With Neptune being an ice giant and Triton being even colder, neither object is suitable for finding life or things like constructing human bases on them, but they're definitely worth exploring. There have been missions planned, but none of these have actually made it off the drawing board before being cancelled. Since missions that far out in the solar system require gravity assists, there's a 14-year gap between possible launch windows. If a mission isn't launched between now and 2019, we'll have to wait till at least 2031 when the window opens again, which means the flyby won't occur till about 2043, which is a long time to wait to have some of the uncertainties about Triton actually resolved once and for all.